So after I filmed the review for Lockley R. Bali, I uploaded it onto YouTube, put it on a private link with a view of going live when it launched, which I'd actually got the wrong day. Whoops. Um, I sent Patrick, who's the sales manager, uh, the link to uh, watch it in advance and give me his thoughts. And he came back with some information that I question in the video um, and actually he gave me the clarity on it. So rather than me kind of cutting in every now and again going, oh, actually, this is the state of play. Let me tell you what he told me up front and then when you watch the video, you kind of know the information already. So uh, in terms of the cask makeup, at the time I didn't know because when they sent an info sheet out, it didn't say what the proportion was in terms of casks. They just said bourbon, STR, and Oloroso Sherry. But it turns out it's about 60% bourbon, 20% STR, 20% Oloroso, which is quite interesting because as you'll see, the STR seems to have a little bit more of an influence. Um, in terms of that first batch, the number of bottles, now I said 3,000. I was close in the fact that there's a three in it, but it's actually more like 30,000. So they did increase the volume for the first batch, but they were looking at about 30,000 on the first batch. Now, again, later on in the video, I do say, I don't know when more is going to come out. They are sold out at the moment in terms of the allocation has gone to all the retailers worldwide, but they do have a bottling run planned for about mid-August. So with any luck in about early September, mid-September, there is going to be another batch of our barley. Now there's nothing on the bottle or the box to say which batch is which. So if you manage to get your hands on an R barley now, there's no evidence to show you got the first one or anything like that. So if you're trying to get hold of one in order to flip it, there's nothing to say this is the first of the R barley batches. It is just ongoing. Now, in terms of the rest, uh, the dates he actually confirmed, we're looking at harvest at about September, fallow, not farrow, as for some reason I say in the video, is about November, and then plowing, which is going to be the last of their seasonal releases, is late Jan, early February. Now, it would be ideal, obviously, if it was for Burns Night, because they're really closely tied in with Robert Burns. And once plowing is out, and I know when it's going to be coming, my intention is to then do a tasting event of all of the first six. So we've got the first release, we've got the R barley, and then we'll have sowing, harvest, far, far, not farrow, Ben, fallow, and plowing. So with any luck, around the end of January, early February, I will be hosting an online tasting event, unfortunately it's UK people only, and I hopefully, fingers crossed, somebody from the distillery, be it Patrick, if I can get John Campbell, that'd be absolutely amazing, but there will be some kind of tasting event where we can taste the first six releases from uh, Lockley, and I'm really, really looking forward to that because, as you'll see, I really like this new Arbali, and I'm really intrigued to see what the other three that are due to come end up being like. So, bit of more clarity for you. Bear in mind what I've just said as you watch the rest of the video. Enjoy. Hello there, Ben Bowers, the Spirit Specialist, and I am here today to talk to you about the new release from the Lockley Distillery, um, and this is their new core bottling. So, so far from Lockley, we've had the first release, we've had the sowing edition, which is part of four seasonal editions, so the rest are farrow, harvest, and plowing, and I think, I think harvest is next in about September time, then it's farrow, I think, and then plowing is next year. Um, so at that point, there will have been six bottlings out. I will have got stock of all of them, I'm hoping, unless I have a massive fallout with Patrick of uh, Lockley. Um, and my intention is to keep a bottle aside of each. So I've got a first release and I've got a sewing out the back. I'm gonna keep one of these, hence me opening this one. And I'm gonna do a tasting of all six of them. So we can kind of like see a progression or we can see the differences between them. But this, our barley, is going to be their ongoing expression with the seasonal releases coming out on occasions. But if you want Lockley, this is the one that you're gonna be able to get pretty much ongoing now. Um, so it's not that it's limited edition, but they're not making a huge amount of this. Um, so I think they've done a first batch of, is it 3,000 bottles? I don't know. I might put some subtitles underneath when I've actually looked at it and done the research after I've filmed the video. Um, but nevertheless, this is now their core bottling. Um, so before I tell you what it tastes like, 
let me give you uh, some background information about the distillery, in case you haven't seen any of the other videos that I've done, but also the makeup of this um, to show how this is different to the previous couple of releases that they've already done. The Lockley Distillery is a conversion of the farm buildings at Lockley Farm, situated eight miles south of Kilmarnock, and at which the world-famous Scottish writer and poet Robert Burns lived and worked from 1777 to 1784. Plans for a distillery by the current owner Neil McGeer were approved in 2014 and whisky production commenced in August 2018. Malcolm Rennie, who'd previously been distillery manager at the likes of Brookladdy, Ardbeg, Kilhoman and Annandale, initially worked with Neil as a consultant before coming on board full-time to oversee the birth of the whisky. However, he then left to join the rebirth of the Rosebank Distillery in October 2021 and was replaced by John Campbell, who had previously been the distillery manager at Lefroy for 16 years. The distillery is another new whisky venture who are producing a grain-to-glass spirit. They grow their own barley in fields literally over the road and have their own water source. The bottle itself features embossing referencing the tyre tracks that surround the farm as well. Our barley is intended to be Lockley's ongoing core expression, which will be continually available alongside seasonal limited edition releases. A combination of spirit matured in first fill ex bourbon barrels, probably from Maker's Mark, Oloroso sherry casks, and shaved, toasted, and recharred red wine barriques, there's no specified number of bottles in the initial batch. However, despite increasing the volume of the batch produced due to high demand, retailers are still being allocated stock as opposed to being able to order freely. No age statement is provided, but it could be assumed the average age of the spirit is around three and a half years old. Lockley R Barley is bottled at 46% ABV, with no colour added and no chill filtration taking place. Right, so so we have the three cast makeup, um, and we also have their own barley, hence the name R Barley. It's funny that, isn't it? Uh, bottled at 46%, um, which seems to be kind of the standard now for most bottlings that are coming out. I'm very rarely seeing 40% now. It's 43, 46 is the, the sort of, almost the standard now. Just that little bit of extra ABV really does seem to, to make a, a, a difference. So I like the box as well because the others were in white boxes. Were they in white boxes? Were they even in boxes? I'm sure they were in boxes. Um, but I really like the color. I, I don't know what it is about this the color, I, I quite like teal as a color anyway. It was our like color when we got married. And it's not too dissimilar to what our kind of like feature color was in our wedding, which I think is why I like this. But I, I do really like this box. It's quite elegant, quite well de designed. The bottle is exactly the same as the previous bottles. I mean, from what I gather, you know, they had a bit of a nightmare getting hold of these bottles. So it's one of those and it's really distinctive and I really like the texture on it. You're gonna get a load of them and you know, make literally make hay while the sun shines. Um, so I, I do like this bottle style as well. It's kind of got a nice weight to it too. So looks already a bit darker in the bottle than the other two. So we've got, and I'm wondering how much of that STR is. Now what I don't know is what the percentages are. So the official kind of info sheet from Lockley just says this is the three cast makeup. It doesn't say what the percentages is and it doesn't give any indication in terms of how big the batch is. So, and obviously this is ongoing, so this is a blending process. So it it's not a one-off batch, in which case it is where it was 75% bourbon and 20% STR and all this lot. This is an ongoing blend that John Campbell is working with. So there is going to be differences as batches and bottlings do come out. So it's kind of, it would be nice to know like what the, emphasis is you know are we looking at more str than bourbon or you know kind of just just knowing what what the rough percentages are or the rough proportions to kind of see where we're expecting some influences to come in rather than it just being here's the three casks that's what the makeup is it would be just nice to know kind of what the emphasis is on which some do you know like wire works um in i think in their small batch bottling turned around and said they didn't give an exact percentage but they said there was mainly bourbon with some amount of str in and then some other casks in there as well just be nice to kind of give some kind of indication of this is what to expect if you're into your cast maturation kind of nerdiness as it were anyway regardless so on the nose quite nutty almost instantly there's a definite kind of slightly dry, but not overly dry, nutty note going on. Kind of like Brazil nuts, 
hazelnuts, even a touch of walnut in there. But there's a bit of sweetness coming through underlying, so it starts to turn into a little bit more of like a peanut brittle. Nice little toffee note in there, but it's light. There's a little bit of a citrusy note in there too. Quite warm, a red berry note coming through, almost like, not, not raspberries, not strawberries, more, more cherry note. Very subtle though, a very subtle, the, the sort of upfront is a nuttiness, then citrus comes through, then you get that kind of red berry note as well. Some interesting things going on in here, and like the other Lockley bottlings, there's a, a lightness to it, and a sort of, and that was what I found with the sewing as well, and it's kind of there. I, I think I started to, when I was doing the sewing video, I started to talk about there was a feel, almost like a, a, a character of Lockley, which very was, very, very was, very much was like being, stood in a field in summer. Now this is, feels a little bit warmer, but it still has that kind of fields of grain note coming through as well. But it's, it's got, there's a warmer note, there's a fruitier note in there too. Really, really interesting nose. Mm. Starts off really quite sweet on the palate. F more fruity on the palate, definitely. Less of the nuttiness. Actually, that's starting to come through now on the finish. But initially, there's a soft sweetness. Candy floss. It's not quite butterscotch caramel. It's like a very light caramel. But I'm getting more of a sugary sweetness. Kind of candy floss. Almost like cream soda. You get then a touch of citrus coming through, like a lemon cream, not too dissimilar to Filey Bay, to be honest. And I'm wondering if that's the bourbon cask influence. And then the fruitiness. Then that what was cherries on the nose is more of a strawberry. So it's kind of like elements of eaten mess in here. It's kind of a creaminess. There's a bit of meringue. There's like the sweet meringue in there, but then there's strawberries too. I think eating mess technically should be raspberries. And then that nuttiness that's weirdly up front on the nose, I think it's that kind of like a nutty oak feel that's on the nose, actually is more towards the finish, but it draws the finish out. But it's pl really pleasantly fruity. But surprisingly sweet up front. Was not expecting that at all. And there's a definite sweet red berry note. So at the start, I'm getting a real eat and mess vibe out of it. And then on the finish, it starts to, to dry. You get a little bit more of a citrusy note, bit more of a nutty note. That oak comes through, very warm, round oakiness coming through. But that really does help lengthen that finish. But you can still kind of taste the fruit. You can still taste that the STR element is definitely here. It's, I'd, I'd love to know what the rough proportions are because it feels like bourbon and STR are the two that are really kind of, and, and they're almost competing with each other to kind of be the standout and actually working very, very well together. It feels warmer than the previous Lockleys. It feels like it's got more weight to it. And actually, I think from recollection of my, what, I've not watched them recently because I don't watch my videos back apart from when I'm editing them, but the... First release, the sewing was quite light and kind of spring, early summer. And I think I said that I'm very interested to see what it's like if it just gets a bit more depth and a bit more richness. And this is starting to do it. It's still light, there's still a delicacy to it, but it feels like it's got more richness to it. There's a much weightier, richer, softer mouthfeel in particular. very much up front the youthfulness comes through at the end you start to get that spicy note you start that's when the nuts and the oak and everything like that comes in and you get that youthful kind of bite that youthful prickle particularly at the back of the throat there'll be some people i'm sure that will try this and swallow it wrong is is kind of a bit demeaning and sounds a little bit ropey as well but it's another one of those young whiskies that depending on how you swallow it it could burn the back of your throat and you're actually doing it a disservice but that's just the youthful nature of it and it's nice to see that spikiness and what it does is it kind of makes it a little bit more interesting on the end as well but i think some people might still feel that this is slightly too young however i'm really really interested to see how this ages over time because 
there is a lot of soft, sweet, fruity characters going on here. And it needs that little bite at the end of it to lift everything back up without it becoming a little bit too flabby and a little bit kind of dead. It's just soft and fruity and very easy drinking, but there's not a lot else. There is still at the moment, and that's that youthfulness that's bringing it up. It'd be really interesting to see what happens in cask over time and across batches as to whether we get even more fruitiness coming through, more of that STR influence. But what there is, I really, really like this as a summer whiskey, as a soft, sweet, very easy drinking whiskey. It might be a bit too fruity for some, it might be a bit too sweet. I'm really getting candy floss, cream, cream soda, sugary sweetness, not sherry cask, toffee, fruitcake sweetness, butterscotch, that sort of thing. It's a lighter sweetness, it's more kind of like sugar syrup sweetness which I really like, but it might be a bit too sweet. It might be a bit too sugary for some. That's fine. Find something else that you like, not a problem at all. But they're doing some really interesting things here, and there's a definite development from the first release to the sewing to this. And as a core expression, I think this is a really good advert because actually the sweetness that it's got in there is going to appeal to a lot more people. If they'd have dialed that sweetness back and gone more for that kind of like lighter citrus creamy bourbony influence. I think more people would be like, oh, it's a bit young, oh, it's a bit light, oh, it's a bit harsh because the way that I've swallowed it. But I think there's richness in here and that red berry note as well is gonna make a lot of people go, oh, oh, this is oh, this is really nice, this is really easy to drink. It's, it's really, really good and I can't wait to see what the other seasonal editions are like because we're starting to see some progression now and we're starting to see some differences between the bottlings, even though we've only had three of them. But it's a really good start and I'm fascinated to see how this progresses over time as well because this is their core bottling. So we will see as time goes on an evolution just in this, let alone their individual bottlings as well. But I'm really chuffed with what Lockley are doing. I think they're doing some fascinating stuff. I like the fact that you can still get that Lockley feel of kind of fields and grain and stood in fields of wheat and corn and everything like that in, in heat. That's still there, but we've got more of a soft, fruity, sweeter note going on top of that as well. That's, the, that's kind of the dominating flavour, but you still get that kind of fieldy, farmy feel, something like that, um, underneath that's saying, no, this is still Lockley Wussy. This is still Lockley at heart. So, uh, our barley, I don't have a lot in the first allocation. Now I know that due to demand, they actually increased the batch numbers that they made available. Uh, what I don't know is whether I can get more afterwards or whether this first batch is, this is pretty much it and then we will keep bottling on going. You might have to wait a bit until you can get some more stock in, Ben. So I don't have many at the moment um, because things are difficult out there at the moment. So I didn't wanna go too crazy on buying the stock in, but, if you would like to buy a bottle of this, and I do highly recommend it, I'm not gonna tell you what the price is because I can't remember off the top of my head because uh, it's early in the morning and I have not had my second coffee to wake me up properly. So I can't remember how much it's supposed to be. Oops. But if you are interested in getting a bottle, everybody's gonna be the same price, basically. So ideally it would be good if you could buy it from me because then I can you know, stay open in business. Um, head to the website, www.spiritspecialist.com. Go and have a look. If I'm out of stock, give me a shout um, because I am going to try and get some more stock in. Obviously, I want to keep this in the shop ongoing. So if I can get more stock, I will do. So if my website is showing is out of stock, drop me a line or click on the button saying notify me if I can stock or whatever it says on there. And I will get that update and I'll get in touch and let you know if I can get some more in. Because it would be really nice if you can buy it from me rather than going, ah, oh, Spirit Specialist is out of stock. I'll just go to Master of Malt. They've got billions of it, whatever. Because actually helping independent businesses such as myself, or if you've got some other independent retailers that you know of, and I'm out of stock, then go to them rather than Amazon or Master of Malt or Whiskey Exchange, because they're gonna survive whatever us small people aren't, and we need your help. So if it says it's out of stock, which is possible, because I just don't know how popular this is gonna be with it being the core bottling, and it doesn't say the word first on it. So there's a whole bunch of people out there that well, I'm not interested because it's not first, it's not collectible, blah de blah de blah If it's out of stock, just drop me a line and I'll let you know if I can get some more in. 
And keep an eye out once uh, Farrow, it is Farrow, isn't it? Farrow and Harvest and ploughing it out. Ploughing's the last one of those seasonal additions. When ploughing is out, that is when I'm gonna do the Lockley tasting. So I've been holding onto a bottle of first release and I've been holding onto a bottle of sewing for quite a while now. And this one that I've opened to do the video, that's going out the back in a box. And then once those other three are out, we've got a nice set of six that's gonna be decanted. It fits in the box of six vintages that I do. And we will do a tasting of the Lockley, the first six that they've released. So whenever plan comes out, that's when it's gonna get announced. Right, so that's me done. And I shall see you hopefully at the next video. Cheers.